Well, Richard Falk is a professor emeritus of international law at Princeton University and the former UN Special Rapporteur uh, on the human rights situation in the occupied Palestinian territories. He joins us now from Istanbul. Thank you so much uh, for joining us again, uh, Professor. The United Nations says that Israel could be guilty of breaking international law through the forced transfer of civilians. This is referring to uh, its call for Gazans in the north to evacuate to the south. In terms of uh, this engagement, has Israel's actions in the past week broken international law and how so? Uh, indeed, it has, and very flagrantly at that. It, it's forgotten in most of the public discussion that uh, Gaza is an occupied territory uh, that is subject to international humanitarian law and is specifically governed by the Fourth Geneva Convention as a place that is under belligerent occupation. Israel has repeatedly violated the obligations of the occupying power by imposing collective punishment throughout this period of more than 50 years since the 1967 war. And so even the Hamas attack has to be seen against a background of Israeli criminality. That does not uh, condone uh, the violations of international criminal law that Hamas is guilty of, but it does give it a context. And the context is that Hamas is the elected government of Gaza when and Israel uh, purported to disengage, but from an international law point of view, they are still responsible as the occupying power. And an occupying power has a primary duty to protect the civilian population that is under occupation. It can restore its security, but it has no right of self-defense against an occupied people. Uh, nor against a movement that takes, uh, abuses the rights of resistance uh, that are enjoyed by an occupied people. So it's a much more complicated reality from a legal perspective than has been generally portrayed in the media. And of course, uh, the issue of Israel breaking international law during times of conflict is a perennial one. It seems to do this every time it engages uh, with conflict, certainly uh, against Gaza. Uh, one of the fundamental rules of war is that any conflict should remain between combatants. Yet in this case, we're seeing literally thousands of innocent Palestinian civilians in Gaza being slaughtered by Israeli forces, yet Israel continues to do this conflict after conflict. How is it able to get away with this? Is it because it has the backing of the world's superpower, the United States? Certainly that's a, a factor. It may not be the only factor. It's also the European countries and uh, back Israel not as unconditionally as the U.S. has, but the geopolitical role of the U.S. as the most powerful country in the world exercising this uh, incredible uh, show of partisanship has encouraged the worst tendencies on, on the part of Israel. And so it's complicit, in my view, in the recent violations of international law. And the right of retaliation, if one wants to use that language, does not entitle the uh, injured party uh, to commit its own uh, war crimes. Uh, however horrendous what the uh, Gaza attack 
uh, originally was on October 7th, uh, the, the retaliation has to be conditioned on reestablishing security by proportionate and discriminate means that uh, protect the civilian innocent population. And Israel has flagrantly ignored this primary obligation and should be held accountable at the UN and elsewhere. And the UN Special Rapporteur on Occupied Palestine has repeatedly tried to document this criminality on Israel's part in periodic reports. Okay, uh, Professor Richard Falk, we will have to leave it there, but we really appreciate your analysis. So thank you so much for joining us on the program.